School District Board of Trustees. It's our regular scheduled meeting. The time is 7, 7 o'clock. Um, item number two, roll call. Ms. Anna Cruz couldn't be here, so that's why I'm, I'm sorry, sir. That's why I'm conducting the meeting today. Mr. Oscar Medrano, here. Michael Vargas. Here. Angel Mendez. Present. Mr. Arnold Padilla. Present. Mr. Hector Leal. Present. Mr. Joe G. Gonzalez. Present. Dr. Mark Puig. Present. Mr. Tony Torres, attorney. Present. Item number three, Pledge of Allegiance to the United States and Texas Flags. Who got introduced first? Yeah. Joining us today is uh, Asiel Ramon Villafranca. Asiel Villafranca is the nine-year-old son of Asiel and Yolanda Villafranca. He is a future fourth grader at Ed Downs Elementary who enjoys playing with his remote control cars and reading books about history. He has a passion for science and has received A honor roll since the first grade. Congratulations. Anyone who knows Asiel can tell you that he is a responsible, friendly, and kind-hearted individual who has extremely bright future ahead of him. Also leading us in the invocation is Miss Emily Francis Cruz. Miss Cruz is the nine-year-old daughter of Alberto and Bobby Joe Cruz. She is a future fourth grader as well at Ed Downs Elementary. When she's not busy reading, she's working on arts and crafts and drawing. Although she has received an all A honor roll since first grade, her favorite subject is math in which she received perfect score on this year's STAR exam. So congratulations, Emily and Asiel. We also want to recognize uh, Principal Ms. Nidia Espinosa, as well as Assistant Principal Marta Martinez. Thank you, guys, and their parents as well. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and just for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please bow your heads. O oh God, of all beginnings and endings, we praise and thank you for the gift of the school year. It has been a time filled with grace and blessings, with challenges and opportunities, joys and sorrows. The days have passed quickly, O oh Lord, the weeks, the months, the seasons, the holidays and holy days. The exams, vacations, breaks, and assemblies all have come forth from your hand. While we trust that you, your purposes have always been at work each day, Sometimes it has seemed difficult to understand and appreciate just what you have been up to in our district. Give us the rest and refreshment we need this summer. Let our efforts of this past year bear fruit, bring all of our plans to a joyful conclusion, and bless us according to your will. With the fulfillment of our hopes and dreams, watch over us in the weeks of rest ahead, and guide us each day as you, as you have done this past year. And guide, no, help us return to school with a new spirit and a new energy. May we con continue to grow in age, wisdom, knowledge, and grace all the days of our lives. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Asiel and Emily. Can we have their parents stand up, please? We want to recognize their parents for a job well done. Item number five, special recognitions, Dr. Puig. Thank you. Uh Thank you, students from Ed Downs Elementary. Y'all did an awesome job. We'll get started with a special recognition. We have a group from San Benito High School. They went to compete at the University Interscholastic League competition. This was at the state level. And we had three individuals that 
earned Division I ratings, and they are hopefully joining us tonight. I know a lot of the students couldn't be here tonight, but uh, please help me welcome Nadia Moreno. She is a sophomore at San Benito High School. And we have our uh, board member, Mr. Joji Gonzalez, I, doing the honors. You didn't show me that memo, sir. <laughs> Another honoree is Jaime Villegas, Jr., a senior at San Benito High School. We have Simon Macias, sophomore at San Benito High School. And their sponsors, Jorge Mascorro and Alberto Ortiz. Come on down, Mr. Ortiz and uh, Mr. Mascorro. Can you join the students up at the front, please? Thank you. I know Mr. Mascorro is here. I saw him. Oh, there he is. Awesome. Uh, let me read a little bit about their accomplishments. They did an outstanding job. Nadia Moreno, which is this young lady here, she is the first female San Benito CISD that gets a Division I at the UIL competition in the Valley and at State. Jaime Villegas is the first guitar student that gets three Division I ratings in the Valley and at State. Awesome. And Simon Macias was selected by the judge as being the top guitarist in the entire competition. Wave at the crowd, Simon. Yay. <laughs> this marked the first year that the guitar department earns a total of 26 medals at state, thus making history. In addition, it was also named the best guitar program in the entire Rio Grande Valley. So let's give them a hand. We have amazing talent in this district. Um, I'd also like to mention Director of Bands is Mark Berea and San Benito High School Principal is Mr. Henry Sanchez. So congratulations students and those of you returning, uh, we look forward to next year's successes. Congratulations. Congratulations. We go from fine arts to athletics, and we have a group joining us this evening from San Benito High School. These are members of the boys' track team, and I'm going to read a little bit about their accomplishments for this particular track season. But before I do that, I'm going to introduce the athletes. Please help me welcome them. They are Erin Adame. Juan Aguirre. John Belmares, Jose Camacho, George Cantu. Alex Castillo, Pablo Castro, Abraham Estrada, Carlos Estrada, Ismael Gaitan Jr., Aaron Garcia, Jediah Guzman, Jose Martinez, Javier Martinez, 
Julio Pesina. Edward Romero. Alex Torres. Javier Reina. Ricardo Saucedo. Julian Benzini. Mario Valdés. Gabriel Vázquez. Lupe Zapata. We have managers Mark Lopez and Ismael Escamilla. And the coaches are head coach Moses Cantu, Gilbert Leal, Juan Rangel, Eric Garza, Jeremy Harris, and Mark Bottle. I'm going to read a little bit about their accomplishments. In District 32-6A, they placed fourth overall. That they were district champions in the four by 200 meter relay team, and the relay team was comprised of Abraham Estrada, Gabriel Vasquez, Jose Martinez, and Javier Reina. The district champion in the 300 meter hurdles was Jorge Cantu. And we have some more recognition of these athletes, and they are the regional qualifiers, the four by 200 meter relay team of Gabriel Vasquez, Javier Reina, Jose Martinez, and Abraham Estrada. And the four by 100 meter relay team of Graviel Vasquez, Javier Reina, Ismael Gaitan Jr., Abraham Estrada. 300 meter hurdles, that was Jorge Cantu. 100 meter dash, Gabriel Vasquez, and the shot put, John Belmares. We also had a state qualifier, John Belmares, who was named uh, the regional 6A shot put champion, and he placed ninth at the state meet. Congratulations. A little bit more highlights, the 4 by 200 meter relay broke the school record this year running 1.29.70 at Westlaco meet and then re-breaking the record this year at the meet of champions with a time of 1.29.53. Great job guys. <laughs> now as far as the shot put record is concerned, uh, it was also broken this year by John Belmares. He had a throw of 56.2. Uh, at the regional track meet in San Antonio, and he broke the record, which had been standing since 1997, by Lee Trevino at 53, 2.5. Uh, John Belmares became the first San Benito boys track athlete to qualify for the state meet since 1997, in which coach Danny De La Rosa, San Benito girls track coach, qualified and went on to win the state title in the 800 meter dash. Congratulations. <laughs> And I do want to add that Coach Dan Gomez and Ram Partida and some of our other coaches are not here this evening because they are joining our softball team who are on the agenda for tonight to earn several awards along with uh, the memorable moment of the Battle of the Arroyo. So they're attending that particular sports event. It's the All-Star Sports Award event night that's happening um, in Harlingen. So they're up for several awards, and we want to wish them well. The softball team was scheduled on the agenda for this evening again, but they are over there, uh, and hopefully they're going to bring back home those awards. So they, be, they will be recognized at the board meeting in July. And so that concludes the recognition for the track team. Congratulations, guys. And coach, thank you. Parents of all these students that we just recognized, if y'all are in the audience, please stand and be recognized. And thank you all for being here with your children and supporting their efforts. We move on to the next state, uh, the recognition here, uh, and we have several teams that we'd like to honor, and I'd like to call on Jack Garcia, the After School Program Director, who is joining us this evening. We have a lot of chess accomplishments, and he'll be telling you a little bit about chess, 
and uh, how we did as a district this year. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. We're missing her, Madam President. Uh, members of the board, Dr. Puig, I thank you uh, for tonight as far as our, our, our after school programs, and I appreciate in your continued support and uh, throughout this 2014 2015 school year. Tonight we're honoring the, the, what we call the cream of the crop, uh, our top chess programs uh, in the district. At this time we have close to 400 participants and I will say that there are a lot of teams that are not here tonight but have worked really hard throughout the whole entire year and I'd like to recognize them also as well. Okay. Uh, First off, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, our site coordinator at Dr. Raul Garza Junior Elementary, Mr. Albert Farias. <laughs> the the Dr. Dr. Raul Garza Elementary primary championship team was the top team in their district. And I will say that uh, th this team uh, throughout the, the chess season, participated in many tournaments. One thing that I will say is that uh, at, at regionals, uh, they top in the K3 division, they place in third place. Uh, at the K1 division uh, at state, they placed in second place overall in, in state competition. And this is the qualifying primary team that advanced to nationals on May 8th through the 10th uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, you want to do the honors and recognize him? Good evening. Uh, the Dr. Raul Garza Junior Elementary team included the following students. Luis Miramontes. <laughs> Julio Martinez. Aaron Rostro. Christian Garza. Luna Bautista. Gabriel Covarrubias. Jake Garcia. Also our chess captain, Nathan Rostro. Our chess sponsors are Ms. Genoveva Covarrubias and Ms. Mandy Martinez. And our chess coach is Mr. Roberto Miramontes. I'd, I'd like to say something. Uh, tonight we're going to honor two individual players out of all the groups tonight. One of them is with this group right here. Uh, we have little Luis uh, Miramontes. He is the 2015 state champion in the K-1 division. I guess it helps to be the coach's son. <laughs> this is your 2014-2015 Wildcat Garza team. Also, I'd like to recognize the principal, Miss Elsa Lambert. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to go that way. Our, our next team under uh, Principal Ariceli Salinas is the Frank Roberts Green Hornet chess team. The first, the first is Ryan Lerma. Ismael Lerma. Gavin Lerma. Elijah Araiza. Jaime Santana, Noah Ramirez, 
David Jimenez, S Stanley Vasquez, Amber Martinez, Anthony Martinez, Noah Aguilar, and Brian Rydell. Our chess coach for Frank Roberts is Michael Brian Salinas, Jr. Also assisting is Mr. Manny Gonzalez. This team here in front of you, members of the board and audience, this is the first time that Frank Roberts Elementary ever competed at the national tournament, and I'm very proud of this group. This group has, has prospered and grown over the last two, three years. There's a lot of hard work here. At the 2015 state tournament and the K-5 elementary championship, they placed third place overall. In Nashville, up against the top-rated schools, over 60 schools, this team placed 21st place in nationals overall in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the 2014-2015 Green Hornet Frank Roberts team. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Our next group, uh, members of the board and audience, I, I want to have to say this. There some of the best chess that has been played in our district has come from our middle schools. Our first middle school is from uh, Berta Cavasa Middle School under the direction of Principal Ray Saldana, Jr. The first group that I'd like to recognize came in first place at the regional uh, championship in the middle school JV division, Rebecca Guzman, Brandon Farias, Brian Azavedo, Perla Montes, Philip Stein II, Mario Para, Matt Lien, Rydell Hyde. Um, and, and we're going to go ahead, I know this is a member of the JV, we're going to bring in the championship team with their coach right now. The Berta Cavasa championship team placed second overall at the regional uh, championships. And the uh, first member is Maverick Reza. <laughs> Polo Stein. <laughs> Ruben Garcia, Jr. <laughs> Cassandra Sal Salvida. I don't think they're here. Trey Reza. Sol Santana. Aiden Solis. Okay. Uh, chess coach Ed Getzo. I know, I, I know it is there. I saw him a little while ago. Mr. Getzo. Assistant coach Noe Garza, and the sponsor is Hilda Barbosa. Well, I, and, I, and I gotta, I gotta say this: uh, the other individual that we must recognize, he's not here tonight. He was the individual regional champion uh, at regionals, and that is Maverick Reza. Thank you, ma'am. Our 2014-2015 Breta Cavasa Grey Pup chess team. Uh, our next group is from uh, Miller Jordan Middle School. Under Principal Mary Alice Leal, I first want to recognize site coordinator Terry Padilla. She was the chess sponsor. Chess team is as follows. 
Elias Vasquez, eighth grade. <laughs> Brian Givada, eighth grade. <laughs> Ricardo Sanchez, eighth grade. <laughs> Jeremy Sauceda, seventh grade. Jacob Reina, seventh grade. <laughs> Isel Bautista, sixth grade. <laughs> Angelica Vasquez, sixth grade. <laughs> Elijah Medina, sixth grade. And his brother Enrique Medina, sixth grade. <laughs> On September 12th, the girls' state tournament was held in Brownsville, Texas, and the girls placed first in the state. And uh, we've got Angelica and Isel here, but we are missing uh, Alexis Del Rio. The team also attended the Region 8 Scholastic Chess Tournament held January 31st and February 1st, and we uh, placed first at the championship level, so we are the regional champs. <laughs> we also went on to the state tournament on March 28th and 29th in McAllen, Texas, where we placed second place in the state, missing it by half a point for the state tournament. <laughs> which led us to the national competition in Louisville, Kentucky, and which was held uh, April 24th through the 26th, and we were the, in the top eighth in the top uh, K-12 division, and we were the only top Texas team in the state. Thank you, Ms. Padilla. Also, one last, we, we need to recognize our their coach, Roberto Miramontes. He, he does a dual role for us. So this is your 2014-2015 Miller, Miller Jordan Middle School Cougar chess team. Congratulations. Uh, don't go too far, Miss Buddy. <laughs> VMA. <laughs> uh, our next uh, group, and I, I want to check to make sure that we have enough the attendance, uh, is our uh, San Benito Veterans Ninth Grade Academy. And members of the board and audience, based on our district criteria, they were they advanced to national competition uh, based on our our criteria. Um, the uh, Samuel Veterans uh, Academy, led by Principal Gilbert Galvan, uh, their sponsor is Ms. Terry Padilla. And she'll recognize these players. The San Benito Veterans Memorial Academy, ninth grade, uh, the following students, Fabian Olivares. <laughs> Robert Torres. Robert Torres. And Coach Manny Gonzalez. The, uh, the, at the regional tournament, this team uh, placed in the, in, the, in the top five. Uh, also at state competition, they placed in the top five ranking as far as among ninth graders. 
which earned them a spot for nationals, which was in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm very proud of this team and uh, their accomplishments. I personally got to see them. I appreciate the hard work by Ms. Coach Manny Gonzalez. This is your ninth grade uh, chess team. And unfortunately, due to sports, uh, some activities that are going, they were unable to attend. So thank you all. <laughs> Members of the board, that will wrap up our chess recognition for tonight. Thank you. Once again, we want to congratulate all our fine students for this remarkable success. And, and uh, you know, we just got to congratulate them and hope they do better next year. And Let's, let's celebrate their success, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Item number six is a superintendent's report. Uh, Dr. Puig. Vice President Madrano, trustees, thank you very much. I'm going to pass out uh, this update before I read the overnight trip. So let me just send this over to you. Three. I just want to highlight the theme of the overnight trips. That's leadership. Something we do very well and that we emphasize in our district is student leadership. And if you look at the overnight trips, FFA and Skills USA are continuing to focus on growing leadership in our children. So that's a great thing. Uh, inside your superintendent's update, you'll see the first page. And the first page is just the monitoring form you're familiar with getting uh, at every regular board meeting. There are four goals. I know the new trustees that are here. Those are the four goals that I identified when we were hired back in uh, January 5th. And it's really uh, governance. Uh, finance and academic assessment and community relations. Uh, on the left-hand side there uh, of goal number one, you see the indicators there, and the first one is just the board training schedule. If you look in your packet, uh, this was emailed to you, but also just your board training schedule uh, for the summer. You should have that already. I do want to highlight and emphasize also under governance is the uh, operating procedure we've worked on since February. Now with new trustees coming on board, and I've given that to you guys, you guys can have a look at it. Uh, Waterford Services, Dr. Alanis and Dr. Jess Butler will be here on January uh, 30th, and uh, we'll try to put uh, a bow on that standard operating procedure. So let's read it between now and then, and I will look at it again as well. And goal number two, financial efficiency, reviewing. This has been an ongoing goal for the district. Just want to give you a bottom line number and figure. If you look inside your packet, that would have been the third uh, item, you have uh, an update on staffing and what we've saved, and it's broken down by resignations, retirements, and terminations. Uh, in February, we were about $1 million in terms of savings for next year. Now we're at $6.4 million. So uh, that's 158 positions less than what we started with. Uh, but again, we've gone to efficiency in terms of master scheduling, taking advantage of attrition, and implementing staffing benchmarks and formulas. <clears throat> I want to get into goal number three, and tonight, uh, Ruben Franco, are you here, Mr. Franco? Here you go. We're going to go ahead and talk about the STAR update and give a little overview of those scores right now. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Franco to do that right now. Thank you, sir. Hello, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Puig. Uh, we recently completed our testing with uh, the STAR testing, both for EOCs and the uh, regular STAR test. Um, at this point in time, we don't have absolute numbers that we can convey to you with with the actual numbers that will be used by the state for our accountability ratings. But we do have numbers that we can at least compare to see how we were doing from this year to last year. So as we look at the overall scores, and by the way, this year math was not uh, computed because they're still trying to establish the scale scores for that test, so that's being left out for this year. For reading, um, Last year, at this point in time, we had a 68% passing rate. Uh, we currently are at 66 with the data we have at, at present. So that's just a, a two percentage point drop. In writing, we have a, well, last year we had a 70, and we're currently at 69%, so one percentage point drop. For science, uh, 77 was the number for last year. Uh, this year, we're at 70. Uh, seven, percent point uh, percentage point drop and then for social studies we were at 63 last year and we're currently at 56 and that was a six percentage point drop um, keep in mind those numbers are not the numbers that are actually 
They're not, they're not the ones that establish whether or not we are meeting the standard from the state for accountability purposes. Um, it's not like in the past before we had the index system where those were very indicative of how you would perform. Uh, we're on an index system, so individually, they, I mean, they all mean something because it means students are either performing or not performing. But as far as the ratings go, um, you know, it, it's not the same. So we'll be talking about indexes for that. Now, there's another component, um, our EOC testing. Uh, last year for Algebra 1, we were at 80. This year we're at 80 again. English 1, 53. We were at 53 again this year. And I did double check those numbers because what a coincidence. Um, English 2, we were at 54% last year. Uh, this year we're at 48%. So that was a, a drop. Uh, biology. 88 last year, 91% this year passing. And then the U.S. history, 92 last year and 81% this year. Now, if you look at, or well, you don't have it, but if you were to compare to the state how we performed uh, in, and the state has numbers that they're putting out that are not quite comparable to what we're looking at. As far as in the courses go, they're putting out first time tester numbers uh, and um, for those students, uh, in biology, the state is performing at 94%, but San Benito is performing at 92%, which is very close to the state average for first-time testers. For U.S. history, the state is at 92%, San Benito is at 83%. Algebra 1, the state is at 85%, and San Benito is at 84%. Uh, English 2, 73 for the state and 73 for San Benito. And then English 1, uh, we do have a drop there. 71% uh, for the state for first time testers, and we're at 62. So certainly that's gonna be a focus area. But the point I'm trying to make is that the district is doing remarkably well, considering a number of challenges that have been facing this district over the last few years. And we're still very comparable in some areas to state average, not just the local average, but the state average. Uh, and, and that's very commendable. And I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact that a lot of hard work and effort were, was put into these results. Uh, things could have been dramatically different, but luckily they weren't. Uh, it says a lot for the staff that were involved. It says a lot for the students as well. And we can only uh, hope that, you know, with this new paradigm that we're working under now, it's going to bring us to even, you know, greater levels. Um, there's something called a phase-in standard that's being used. Uh, the standard that's being applied for the last three or four years has been what they refer to as phase-in one. And that's what we've been comparing ourselves to. But I, I want you to understand that next year is going to be the first year that we're going to go into phase two, or phase-in two, level two. And if we had applied that standard this year, that biology that was at 92 for the district, would have been 81. The history would have been from 83 to a 70. Algebra 1 would have been from an 84 down to a 70. English 2 from a 73 down to a 41 percent. And that English 1 from 62 down to 47 percent. So in essence what I'm saying is that if everybody performed at the identical level that they did this year, it's the same number of answers correct, uh, on the same test, uh, we would be in a much different situation come next year. The staff is well aware of it. Dr. Puig, I'm sure, has reinforced this and will be reinforcing it at the retreat, I'm sure. Um, and so everybody's going to be working with that expectation in mind that, that we're looking at a higher standard going into this coming school year. When you look at the, uh, the same thing at the elementary, so three to eight, uh, you see that the um, and the state does it as far as the results by, by, by grade level. So uh, for reading, grades three, uh, the San Benito is at 75, the state is at 77. Fourth grade, 62 for San Benito, 74 for the state. Fifth grade, 80 for San Benito, 78 for the state. Six, at sixth grade, 63 for San Benito, 76 for the state. Seventh grade, 68 for San Benito, 75 for the state. And in eighth grade, we're both at 78. 
bottom line, the, the, the majority of those were below the state when we compare ourselves by grade level. Um, writing is done at fourth and seventh grade. Uh, 69 for San Benito, the state is 70. Uh, 70 at seventh grade, the state is at 72. Uh, so we're fairly comparable. The science, 64 at fifth grade, uh, 72 for the state, so a gap. And then at eighth grade, 57 for science for the district and 70 for the state. Uh, the gap gets even more significant when we look at social studies. 46 for the district, 64 for the state. So there's a lot of data that we've received. The campuses have certainly dissected that data down to the student level. Uh, their data analysis, they look at uh, all sorts of tools that they have at their, uh, their discretion to run so that the students can be targeted for this coming school year for those deficiencies that they have. And then with regard to the index system, which is what's going to be used for the um, accountability ratings, we are on projected at this point that the district will meet the standard for every campus uh, and also for the district itself. Um, it is a projection, so don't hold me to that. Uh, but it is, I think, a solid projection, and I think that um, all the campuses will be safe this year. And part of that is attributed to the fact that the accountability system changed in the sense that it used to be that you had to have a compliance in index one, two, three, and four, and had they not changed it to where it's one or two and three and four, uh, we would have probably had uh, two campuses that would have been not meeting expectations. Dr. Brig, that's all I have at this point. Thank you, Mr. I, know you've had, uh, I know you've had the data for two weeks here. You've looked at it. Uh, we'll add another, uh, I'll send you one more, and this will have the, uh, I want the state average in there as well. I know the last two weeks you've seen that, but we've got a lot of work to do, clearly. There's nothing remarkable, I don't want to take that out of context about the scores. Uh, I think what the point we're getting at is that we've had a lot of turnover and change to leadership. And when you do that, it causes instability throughout the organization with filters all the way to the classroom. That's no excuse. I, you know, uh, we're, we're here to execute a plan and make a plan. The scores are unacceptable. Not by our standards. We have too many talented principals. We have too many talented kids. We have too many talented teachers. And we have a community that demands excellence. So we have a lot of work to do. And that's what we're going to do moving forward. Sir? Dr. Quay, um, I noticed that the information we got was just a comparison to last year. And the data you bring into the, to us today is comparisons to the state. Is it possible to get a comparison to our local area, local region? I'd like to see how we compare to the other school districts in our... In um, at, at this point, the only way it would be available to me is if I individually called each district and, and asked them to please share their, their numbers with me. Um, and well, believe it or not, some are very hesitant. Region 1 will put out those numbers, but I, I don't believe they have all those numbers in their system yet to put it out. But once they do, we can certainly do that for yeah, you. Yeah, well, once they do, or, or as soon as we have an opportunity to be nice to them, at least get an idea of how we stand regionally. Right. Uh, and, and you are correct, Dr. Wick, these numbers are not acceptable, and I think it is an area that I know I definitely would like to see us uh, better our, our district's position because uh, they're, they're somewhat disappointing. Yeah, uh, and, I'm going to speak to the... I'm sorry, uh, sir. I agree with what you're saying, Arnold, but the thing is, to me, it doesn't really matter how, how the other districts are doing. You know, my concern is how we're doing. And I, I saw the scores, and... Uh, they're not too good, and uh, and I I already heard you say you know that you know that we're it's, we're not challenging the kids and all of that, and that's fine and dandy. But as the we do need to get more improvement on our on our scores with the kids because, like you said, we have excellent students, and there's no need for for these scores. And uh, I also want to reiterate uh, when we're presenting the scores and we're accepting them as adults that we be careful with the language we use as far as the perception of the scores. Um, you know, perception is in the eye, eye of the beholder. So if we see scores that are not so well or mediocre, I want to be careful in, in, in expressing um, the, the, the too much hope, right, in these scores. Like I don't, and I don't want to undermine the work that has been done this year with the principals. I don't want to undermine the students the families and all that went in there, but I, as adults, we need to be more careful with the language we are using and really identifying how these scores really look to make sure the community is, is on the same page as we are. And two things I'll say to that. Uh, one, let's not also reduce the teacher to just a score or the student for that matter. I want to emphasize that. They're not solely, you know, uh, 
a, a test score. We're never going to reduce kids to a test score or a principal for that matter. It is a component. It's a critical component. I think some of the ire that you feel up here, at least for me, is that I know we can do better. We have too many talented people. We have way too much talent in this organization to be underachieving like this. This is a smart group of people in this organization. We're going to succeed, and we're going to make a plan starting with that retreat tomorrow that's six days long. I'll also say to your point, Trustee Padilla, um, the comparison group that we really need to look at is what the state does for us. That'll be out August 9th. They will group campuses across the state that are just like one another. That will give us a good window of a campus. Some will be in our neighborhood. Some will be up in North Texas, South Texas, or West Texas, but have the same demographics exactly in terms of migrant, LAP, SPED, and that'll give us a, a good comparison group. There's usually 40 schools clustered together uh, in each one of those. That'll give us a window on how we're doing as well. And, so. and if I may add, uh, Dr. Yes, Quake, uh, we, we also do have that comparison to the region when we do get those regional reports, and it's a standard report that we do provide to the board every year and to the community as well. Uh, and, and it does compare us to the entire Region 1 area, which, which obviously extends all the way to Laredo, but may not necessarily be what you want. If you wanted something more localized, uh, again, we can work on that, but it, 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 it would be different, different from the Region 1 number. No, and that's fine. It's really just to get a comparable. And I understand, Dr. Puig, when we're saying we're comparing ourselves to districts that are our size and our demographics, but it is, it is good to get, at least get an idea of how we gauge ourselves against other districts who do have the same demographics, the same student counts, and the same difficulties as a whole, because that gives us an idea of what we're looking at and the true comparison. When I'm referring to the, to the Valley and, and looking at Region 1, is that Region 1 does have some demographics that are specific to, to Region 1 that, isn't, that may not be found in other areas of the state. So it does give you some perspective as to how successful other districts are in our area and something to measure ourselves against. Thank you, Mr. Franco. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Next up is item number seven, public comment. Do we have public comment? Yes, sir. No public comment. In order to promote efficient meetings, the board may act upon more than one item by a single vote through the use of consent agenda. Consent items placed on the agenda shall be marked with an asterisk. Consent items are items for which no board discussion is anticipated and for, for which the superintendent recommends approval. Proud to the time which approval of consent agenda is had, at the request of any member of the board of trustees, any item on the consent agenda shall be removed and given individual consideration. Under business and finance, 1506A-1, request for approval of option to extend contract for one additional year for office supplies. Consent. 1506A-2, request for approval of option to extend contract for one additional year for general merchandise. Consent. 1506A-3, request for approval of option to extend contract for one additional year for school groceries. Consent. 1506A-4, request for approval of bids on walk-in purchases on the general hardware supplies. Consent. 1506A-5, request for approval to terminate the on-site primary health agreement with Valley Health System, LLC. Question. Question. 1506-6, request for approval of 2014-15 budget amendments. Consent. 1506-7, request for approval of 2014-15 budget transfers. Question. Under administration, 1506A-8, request approval for board policy update 102. 1506A-9, request for approval of district organizational chart. I, I think we had discussed that we're going to uh, postpone the item till it, after we come from executive session. Is that, is that a, okay? Right. Yes. 1506A-10, request for approval of memorandum of understanding of San Benito Anti-Graffiti and Community Garden Project. Consent. 1506A-11, request approval of board minutes. Consent. Okay, at this time, I'll ask a motion to approve all those items that I we said consent. Uh, 
Anybody on the board? Okay. Okay, moved and second. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. All right, we go to Mr. Padilla on your question. I just, uh, again, I apologize. I'll repeat the question in case it was not heard. Uh, I was saying that we did not get any backup information to the, uh, to the action item, and I know that we received some right now. Just wanted to assure ourselves that we do have a transition plan for those families that will be uh, showing up at a clinic that will be closed. Well, we won't transition until we get into the new plan year. So this will run through the end of the plan year, September 30th at the board chooses to do that. Um, if you look at the clinical analysis that's enclosed here, the other trustees have heard this from two independent consultants that came in here and, and talked about the original intent of the clinic was well-intentioned. It was to actually lower the cost. It's actually had the opposite effect. It's exacerbated mm -hmm. claims and referrals. And if you look at the next page behind the clinic analysis, just to underscore the overall health care cost, if you go to uh, May 31st, I want you to have a current idea of where we're at today. We spent another million dollars in claims. Now, if you go to the next column, again, on the same line, May 31st, our year expenditure to date is almost $11 million. How much did we actually budget? Well, the next line, you see we, we see $13.6 million there. Above that is 9.9. .9. That's what we actually budget. We budgeted nine, we have exceeded that. The next line again, uh, I'm sorry, May 31st, the next column there, you see $14.4 million. Again, we didn't budget $14.4 million. The clinic is only a component of this cost, but the clinic is driving and has driven the cost of healthcare because of the way the referral system has not worked as it was originally planned. In theory, it was going to actually drive costs down. It's had the opposite effect. If you, and this isn't the first year it happened, if you turn the next page, You'll see, again, these, this data was produced by independent consultants that came in here before you all were here. 13-14 uh, plan year, if you look at the managed care plan, high plan, low plan, all you have to, and these also include, if you look at the third line, total fixed cost, this includes the clinic cost. You see, and you go down to the plan totals for each independent, independent plan, they're all in the red. They're all in the red. And so this is just a component of the bigger problem we've had with healthcare for the last two years. Last year we transferred $5 million. So um, this attempt of, of a recommendation for closing the clinic is just to hit the reset button on this health care. And let's just take a step back, get a responsible consultant, create actually sound plans, and get the health care back on track. So that's where this recommendation is coming from. Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. There's a motion to approve this item. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Padilla, your next question on request for uh, Dr. Quaid, the only reason I, I'm, que I'm questioning this is I see that your signature is not on about uh, two-thirds of these yeah. documents, and I just want to assure myself that you have looked at these budget transfers uh, before they're approved. Nothing gets approved without my signature on it. So if it doesn't have my signature on it, it's not approved. Okay. Well, they're coming to us for approval, yeah. but yet they don't, yeah. have your, they don't have your signature. Then we can't approve these. Okay. That's the reason yeah. I'm questioning yeah. so, yeah, thank you. Do you want a table? Table the item? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Those items can we approve without the, with the exception of those items that do not have my signature on them. Okay, so I'll move to approve all those that have Dr. Quigg's signature, all those that do not get tabled for the next meeting. Oh, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Go ahead, Mr. Paddy. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Quaid, the only question I have, and I, I have read through the update policy, but there's only one question on H11. Okay. Um, it may be me, or this page, this page makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. H11, sir? H11. Okay. If you look through the strikethroughs yes. and you read the paragraph as it reads, uh, I, 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 I could make heads or tails of it, and I just want to make sure that our, our attorney has reviewed it. We H, talked. H11. <laughs> We met before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he right, was good, so, so I was good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, does it sort of make sense in the end? Yes, did. Okay. Well, and the only reason being is about 80% of the page is, strike, is struck out and only about, you know, the rest of it's left in, in words that are 
randomly uh, portrayed, and I just wanted to make sure that when we put these words together, it actually makes sense. No, it makes sense that it's, it's excessive language is covered in those policies. Okay, thank you. Motion, Motion to approve. Second, is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. All right. Item number nine, close meeting, discussion under authority of the Texas Government Code for the purpose of private consultation with the board's attorney on any subjects or matters authorized by law. Uh, 551.074, for the purpose of the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or employee. A, report on personnel. B, employment, resignation, and retirement. We're under executive session uh, at 7.50. It's 8.49 and we reconvene from executive session. Dr. Puig. Vice President Madrano, trustees, I recommend that you the, uh, Mike, Mike. Mike. Trustees, I recommend that we approve the uh, new organizational chart as presented this evening. Dr. Puig is recommending that we uh, present the organizational chart. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Vice President Madrano, Board of Trustees, I recommend we approve the employment of the routine personnel as follows. Uh, Juan Martinez, Secondary Dean, San Juan Ortiz, Secondary Dean, and Maria Rodriguez, Secondary Dean for term contracts for the 15-16 school year. Is there a motion on the floor? A motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Is that it? Okay. Uh, meeting adjourned at 8.51.